program starring Jack Benny with Don Besser and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with O.K. Cook from the picture Kid Million. Coming out of sightseeing bus leaves 42nd Street, Great White Way of the Nation. We turn south at Fifth Avenue and approach the most celebrated library in the world. The New York Public Library, famous from coast to coast for two stone lions which guard its portals. On our right, the famous stone lions oh, which for centuries... the lion's moving! He's walking! He's running! One of the stone lions is running away! Ladies and gentlemen, oh, this is the sight of a century. A stone lion is oh, running down Fifth Avenue! Oh, stop him! Oh, please, stop him! Oh. You can't stop me, lady! I'm going after some jello! You know the new jello now tastes twice as good as ever before. Yes, sir. Who wouldn't run after the new jello? Taste it yourself and you'll be crazy about that richer, full-bodied fruit flavor, a flavor as refreshing as the juicy ripe fruit itself. That extra rich goodness is put into jello by a brand new exclusive process, a process which actually blends the fruit flavor into the tiny crystals, holds it there for you to enjoy. Try the new jello and discover for yourself that it now tastes twice as good as ever before. And remember, only Jell-O gives you this new extra-rich flavor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as it is impossible for me to offer you a cigar, cigarette, or a drink, I can still offer you Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. H-E-L-L-O. This is Jack Benny, your local correspondent, coming to you with the late news reports from all over the world. Sees all, knows all, but still bets on the wrong horse. Mary, bring me those hot items. Okay, boss. Here they are, first local news. New York, New York. New streamlined train arrives here from California in 56 hours, breaking all records. New Yorkers now wearing streamlined underwear to get to work faster. Hey, first one got a laugh. Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo, American baseball players, including Babe Ruth, arrive here and play Japanese teams. The battery for Japan was Dizzy Osaki and Daffy Matsuyama. In left field was Hacky Wilson, and on second, Saki was Frankie Frisky. <laughs> All good Japs. In the opening game, Ruth made a homer, and Japs named a town after him. It is called Yoka Homer. Isn't that clever? <laughs> New Orleans, Louisiana. Senator Huey Long organizes football team. He says he doesn't care how good they play as long as they protect his right eye at banquet. <laughs> New York City, November 9th. Don Bester, famous orchestra leader, holds winning ticket on Irish sweepstakes and leaves for Ireland in the morning. November 10th. Bester finds out it's a cigar coupon and cancels his trip to Ireland. <laughs> Dublin, Ireland, November 5th. Frank Parker, tenor singer, arrives here to live in Irish free state. November 6th. Parker finds out it's not free and returns to America. Say something, Frank. It's a lie. November 11th. Parker denies statement and will hear from me immediately after this program. Says you. Says me. Election news. Sacramento, California. What's Jack swearing about? That's the name of a town in California. Sacramento. Miriam, re-elected governor of California. Hooray for Miriam. Is that Marion Hopkins? No. <laughs> I was just going to send her a wire. Mm, now for our sporting section. Los Angeles, California. Fight news. Max Bear is here training for five real pictures. When interviewed, said he is in shape for four reels, and if he outpoints, Myrna Loy will be ready to meet Garbo. <laughs> New York, more fight news. Jack Dempsey, champion of champions, is in training here to open restaurants. He is in great shape, feeling fine, and raring to cook. Ah, uh, what other program gives you this hot fight news? Not even this program. Quiet. <laughs> More football news. Scores of yesterday's game. Colgate, 20. Tulane, 6. Leland Stanford, 24. Shirley Temple, 5. AT&T, 110. General Electric, 19. Liberty, 1776. Jell-O, 6. 6 watts. Delicious flavor. Ah, what a game. <laughs> More football news. Sing Sing wins again. Jones, halfback, runs 60 yards for touchdown. Said if he had run that fast on another occasion, he wouldn't be with his present team. Ah, some more news. Hot from Hollywood. And cold from laying here. Mm. <laughs> Hollywood, California. 
it is rumored that Joan Crawford is blah, 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 blah. No. Yes, it is also rumored that Gloria Swanson will not blah, 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 blah. No. Yes, and our Hollywood correspondent tells us that Kay Francis was seen blah, 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 blah. Well, Jack, what are you talking about? Nobody can understand you. Well, that's the idea. If nobody can understand me, nobody can sue me. Play, Don. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll keep warm all winter, played by Don Besser and his Jellonian. Say, Don, every time I introduce one of your numbers, I always give your orchestra another name. I mean, what do you call your boys, anyway? What do you mean, Jack? Well, for instance, there's Waring's Pennsylvanians, you know, Lombardo's Royal Canadians, Lyman's Californians. Haven't you got a name for your orchestra? No, Jack, I've been trying to get a name, but you see, uh, one of my boys, that fellow with a mustache over there, uh-huh. comes from London. Yeah. And that first violinist with the beard, well, he comes from Russia. Oh, the fellow with the beard, does he? What's his name? George Bernard Ginsburg. Hmm. <laughs> uh, there is a resemblance, yes. And then that, uh, that cornet player with the Van Dyke comes from Belgium, and that fellow playing the French horn comes from Paris. Oh, you mean the fellow with the goatee? <laughs> yes. We have a goatee down at our house without any nose. <laughs> How does it smell? What's the difference as long as he's healthy? Mary, please. <laughs> uh, what's his name down, the fellow with the goatee? Isidore Chevalier. Isidore Chevalier, isn't it? I bet somewhere hidden in this orchestra is Yasha Bunchuk O'Toole. I know you. Well, anyway, Jack, I don't know what to call my orchestra. Why don't you give him a shave and call him Bester's Disgusted Yankees? Then... <laughs> Thanks, Jack, but I'll leave well enough alone. And now that we have named Bester's Orchestra, we will continue with our policy of bringing you another outstanding artist. We intended to have the four Marx Brothers here tonight. Groucho, Chico, Harpo, and, uh, uh, what's the fourth one? Jello. Yes, yes. Uh, but the, uh, <clears throat> that was Wilson, folks. There was no doubt about that. Uh, but the Marx Brothers were unable to get here. And here's a wire I just received from Harpo. It says, Dear Jack. And he further states... <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, you see for yourself, folks, they meant well. Hmm? But we are not unprepared, for we have with us this evening that great Shakespearean actor... A man who, of all the applause he has received in his day, were put end to end, you could hit, still hear a pin drop. I now take extreme pleasure in presenting the outstanding exponent of Shakespearean acting, Mr. J. Barrett Wimpole. Uh, say something, Mr. Wimpole. Say something? Of course, I shall say something. Dost thou think I am an acrobat? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. <laughs> Unlike thee, I am a tragedian, a student of Shakespeare, and a renowned thespian. Mary, what's a thespian? A fellow that rides a horse. Don't bother me. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, tell me, Hamlet, uh, what's the last thing you played in? Ten nights in a barroom. Ten nights in a barroom. That's a pretty long run these days. <laughs> uh, do you know uh, Shakespeare's Merry Wives of Windsor? I am an actor, not a gigolo. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why, I've played in every hamlet from Maine to California. I have played Richard III, Henry VIII, and Louis XIV. Hmm, all one night stands. Uh, well, I was an actor, too. See, I played New Haven the Sixth, Hartford the Seventh, and Bridgeport the Eighth. <laughs> Isn't that good? Hmm? I think you're the tragedian. Is that so? Ah, thou kiddest me. Well, Jack, look how mangy his fur coat is. Mangy? When thou art as old as this coat, Thou wilt also be mangy. Lay down, Macduff. Uh, tell me, Macbeth, that coat that thou wearest, is its fur minkus? Nay, skunkus. Oh. <laughs> well, it looketh. <laughs> Evidently, thou art much in need of money. Yea, and verily. Hast thou any? Nay, and positively. Say, mister, what does yea, and verily mean? What's the difference, as long as thou art healthy? Get your own joke. That one's a joke. Well, Groucho, our time is limited. Would you mind giving us a sample of the genius? Gladly. Oh, what is thy place? Oh, anything at all. Something in the manner of John Barrymore. Barrymore. He's of Richard Mansfield, Joseph Jefferson, and... Popeye the sailor. Yes. yes. What has Barrymore got that I haven't got? A haircut. I got that one in. <laughs> That's very good, too. Go ahead. I will play Montague in a scene from Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Ah, uh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Romeo, those are Juliet's lines. She said that. Pardon me, but I've been laying off so long I forgot who said it. <laughs> well, all right, then play the part of Romeo. I shall. Ah, uh, Juliet, I am here beneath thy balcony. Dost thou not see me? Dost thou not see me? Plenty of dust to see you. Go ahead. <laughs> 
Ah, Juliet, thou art more beautiful than ever. Do you hear me? Hey, my Thine mind. eyes are like Santa's. Thy nose is like Durante's. Thine ears are like Kenner's. And her teeth are like pearls. That about covers all of radio, I think, eh? You can go now. Well, I'll go, but I shall return. Mark me, and mark me well. <laughs> I will. <laughs> And now, Frank Park, Anthony, our Shakespearean tenor, will sing Water Under the Bridge. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Can I say just a word about Jell-O? Uh, not right now, Don. Oh, I just want to mention the six delicious flavors. No, after Frank's song, not right now. Well, can't I just say that its fresh fruit flavor is twice as good as ever before? Be careful, Don. I'll have to mark you and mark you well. <laughs> sing, Frank. <laughs> now, that was uh, Frank Parker singing Water Under the Bridge. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature oh, attraction... Jack. What? And here's the first fan letter we've received on the Jell-O series. Hmm, five weeks and fan mail already. Eh? Well, let's see, uh, how are we doing? Uh, open it, Mary. Huh? Uh, it's from Yokohama. Yokohama? Well, I didn't know our program reaches all the way out there. Let's see it. That's Oklahoma, Mary. <laughs> Give it to me. It's from a lady. She says, uh, Dear Jack Benny and the six delicious flavors. She means raspberry, strawberry, cherry, orange, No, Don, and Don. She means Parker, Wilson, Bester, Livingston, and Benny. Anyway, it says, uh, Dear Jack Benny, I have been listening to your new series of broadcasts and also received the photograph of you last week. After looking at your picture, I think you could easily play the part of Charlie Chan. Charlie Chan? Well, he's a Chinaman, isn't he, Mary? She knows it. So I will be listening in next Sunday night and hope you will not disappoint me. What a silly request, me play a Chinaman. You can do it, Jack. Why, you don't even need a makeup. Hmm, my pals, huh? All right, I will play the part of a Chinaman to show you I can do it. Ladies and gentlemen, immediately after the next number, we will present to you the outstanding mystery of the season, which we will call Carly Can in Radio City. Play Don. That was uh, Chinatown, My Chinatown, played by Don Besser and his Chow Maniac. And now for our studio murder mystery, or Charlie Can in Radio City. On with the play. Curtain. Music Don. <laughs> Gee, how gloomy the studio looks tonight. I'm afraid something's going to happen. Hmm, what strange characters in the studio. Give me the creeps. I'm going to get out of here. Turn on those lights. Mary, there's nothing to worry about. Now be calm. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? Someone has been shot in the studio between the microphone and Bester's orchestra. What a place to be shot. Good heavens, it's Don Wilson. Don Wilson? That's too bad. Gee, he was a swell fella. And how he could do the karaoke. Ha, cha, cha, cha. Nobody leaves the studio. <laughs> Mary, call up Charlie Can. He's the only one that can solve this mystery. Okay, I'll call him at once. Operator, give me Yaka Main, Um Choi Gao Fui. Hello, by your dare, Charlie? A man has been murdered in our studio. Come right over, quickly. He got here quick. Who is it? Charlie Can, the parasol man. Come in. Excuse, please, for me to bring humble body in your studio. Put feet on that and don't dirty the joint. <laughs> Excuse, please, to ask what happened here tonight. Our announcer was shot and we want justice. Begging thousand pardons. You get just as good announcer any place. <laughs> as my honorable ancestor would say, dead men tell no tales and gather no more. Stick to detective work, Charlie, and solve this mystery. All right, nobody leaves. Park honorable bodies and chairs. Cebu play. <laughs> This is an outrage. No, this mystery. Begging thousand pardons. What is your name? Don Bester. I'm the orchestra leader. Honorable stick looks suspicious. What you use him for? Why, I leave the orchestra with this stick. Ah, but if orchestra don't show up, what you do with stick? I didn't kill him, I tell you. I didn't kill him. 
With million apologies, I put handcuffs on your honorable wrist. Gee, but he's nice. <laughs> Excuse, please. What you do here? Well, I'm one of the comedians on this program. With humble apologies. That's what you think. <laughs> all right, then, all right. I'm one of the tennis singers on this program. Hmm. I hate to ask charming tenor, but did you kill men on floor? I should say not. I'm a lady killer. <laughs> With 6,803 apologies, you are a chump. I'm a what? Chump, chump. With 112 apologies, I don't get that. Chump, chump, what do you do when you leap over a mud puddle? I fall in. <laughs> Excuse, please. Got to get back in character. Excuse, please. I think I look round room. Hmm, I find gun still smoking. Gee, and there's a no smoking sign here, too. <laughs> Who this gun belong to? It's not mine. Nor mine either. I don't own it. Ah, somebody honorable liar. But I keep it. I look around some more. Hmm, package. What is an honorable package? That's my laundry. I take him, do good job, bring him back Friday. <laughs> I thought you were a detective. Yeah, me washy, too. <laughs> ah, I hear noise. Somebody in honorable closet. You will oblige me to come out. Come out, please. Jahemi! <laughs> Who is in closet? Ah, uh, Juliet. I am here beneath thy balcony. Dost thou not see me? Ah, uh, Lumpung Hamlet. <laughs> Did you kill Honorable Wilson? Nay, nay, a thousand times nay. Excuse, please. What you do in closet? I hung up my fur coat and forgot to get out of it. That's good, that's good. Close closet door, please. As my honorable ancestor would say, birds in closet worth two on this program. Charlie Can, you are uncanny. You don't look so good either. Oh, this is silly. Can't you find out who killed Don Wilson? Maybe it was suicide. No, no suicide. He liked himself too much. Don Wilson always buy honorable drinks for Don Wilson. Well, you'll never commit suicide either. Likewise. Now, honorable young lady, excuse please, for two questions I would like and you for me to answer. I killed him didn't, so ask me no. Go ahead. <laughs> how no did you well, Wilson? I mean, how well, Wilson, you know did? Pardon my rotten accent in this hand. Mm, somebody knock on honorable door. Quiet, please. I see who it is. How do you do, stranger? <laughs> mm, your name, please? Ming Toy Schlepperman. <laughs> Ming Toy Schlepperman. Where are you from? From Shanghai, China. Hello, Schlepp. Hello, Liddy. <laughs> With 956,000 pardons, 423, what are you doing here? I came to help you solve the mystery with 15 apologies, three hits, and no errors. <laughs> Tell me, are you a Chinaman too? What else? As my honorable ancestor would say, when in Rome, do as Romans do. As my honorable ancestor would say, no matter where you are, eat chop chicken livers. <laughs> And as Lou Holtz would say, you sat it, my friend. Uh, are you the detective telephone? Excuse, please. Tan is the name. Tan. Well, uh, don't you know me? I'm your brother, Tomato. <laughs> With plenty of apologies for that joke. Hey, Charlie, are you going to find out who killed Wilson or are you going to pull another old hair on it? Excuse, please. I find out right away. One more question. What did Honorable Wilson do in spare time? He had an invention for six delicious flavors. Raspberry, strawberry, wait, cherry, Wait, 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 I have ideas. Where he keep plans for honorable inventions? An honorable piece of paper, an honorable inside coat pocket. Excuse, please, with one apology. That's all I got left. I searched honorable pocket for honorable paper on honorable Wilson. He is not here. He has disappeared. Excuse, please, honorable Wilson not here. He gone. Fly coop. Good heavens, where's Wilson? Yes, where is he? Don't worry, folks. I'm up here in heaven, but I still say that Jell-O has that extra rich fruit flavor and tastes twice as good as ever before. And as my honorable ancestor would say, play Don. <laughs>
You know how delicious fresh raspberries or strawberries smell. You know the intriguing fragrance of rich, ripe cherries. You've enjoyed the tart tang of fresh lemons and limes and the juicy ripeness of golden oranges. Well, that's just what the new Jell-O brings you, a flavor as delicious, a fragrance as delightful as the fresh, ripe fruit itself. You sniff it the minute you open the package and sniff it again when you dissolve those powdery crystals in warm water. And when you've chilled your Jell-O to beautiful, quivering firmness, when you've taken your first exciting taste, then you know that Jell-O tastes twice as good as ever before. It's extra rich, twice as delicious, but you'll find this new extra rich fruit flavor only in Jell-O. So look for the big red letters on the box and be sure you get the genuine Jell-O. concludes our fifth program in the new Jell-O series, and although we didn't find out who killed Wilson, Jack Benny is a pretty good guess. However, Wilson will be back with us next week as he has more than one life to give to our product. Come on, Mary, let's go. Yes, Jack. And as my honorable ancestor would say, I'm hungry and I'd like a sandwich. And as my answer would say, I'll see you later. Good night, folks. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company. WJZ New York.